like. What sort of problems do you see with horse boxes generally? Generally they tend to be, particularly with this size horse box, the seven and a half ton one, uh, overloading on the front axle. And then you see other mechanical problems with them, uh, worn tyres, worn shock absorbers, they're all road safety related items that people could actually check themselves before they use the box first time going out to an event. And, and what's the real problem with being overloaded in a horse box like this? Overloading is a problem insofar as the vehicle's designed to carry a particular weight. If you exceed that weight then the components like the suspension, the tyres, the brakes are all working harder than they should do and in an emergency you may well exceed their working limits and the emergency suddenly becomes a lot more serious than it would have done otherwise. I've heard that commercial drivers actually have to check their vehicles every time they use them and do something called a walk around check. Is that something that I need to be doing with my box? That's right. Commercial driver will do by law a walk around check to make sure that the vehicle is safe to go out on the road before they actually take that vehicle out. So although you're not using the vehicle commercially, you're still using the same size vehicle so it would be a good idea to make sure that that vehicle is safe before you take it out on the road because if there are any safety related problems they're going to bounce back to you or to you very very quickly. Okay. So what sort of things do I need to look at if we start here? What sort of things should I be looking at? Okay, first thing we can look at is actually the windscreen itself up here. What we're checking the glass for is there's no obstructions, there's no stone bull's eyes in the windscreen, no big cracks in the windscreen and that the glass is clear. So that's the first thing we would want to check. We could then go on and check the windscreen wipers themselves. What we want to do here is make sure that the blade is clean, clear and is not broken at any point on its wiper arm. Okay, It's securely attached to the wiper arm and then obviously we can check the washers and wipers to actually make sure that they function properly. Washers are important, you know, you get dirt on the windscreen, it's a piece sort of foggy, misty weather, you want to be able to clean that glass so you can see where you're going. And talking about seeing where I'm going, if I do well at a show, I like to display my rosettes all along the front, so I guess you probably tell me that's probably not a good place to put It's them. not a good place to put them. Uh, yeah, it's great to actually win them, but in reality, put them at the back of the cab, okay? You don't want sat-navs, phones, and TV screens and all the rest of it blocking your vision. If you've got a small child in front of you, the problem is that that object can actually obscure them and you can miss them, um, which then means that you can end up with an incident. So, uh, no, keep everything out of the swept area of the windscreen, the bit that the wipers cover. Okay, is there anything else that I need to be checking at the front of my door? Well, depending upon the vehicle, what we do need to do is make sure that we've got coolant in there, so we need to make sure that we've got water in the radiator, we need to make sure that we've got oil in there, because that's important, okay? Um, we also need to make sure that the fluid levels for the clutch and the brakes, if they've got uh, fluid in them, yep, we need to make sure those are right. But, most important thing, down here, the headlights themselves. What we need to do is obviously make sure that the glass is unbroken, that the reflector doesn't have any rust on it, it's silver all over, that the bulbs work, so we should have a side light, a dipped headlight and a main beam. And whilst we're down here, indicators working would be a good idea. They're telling everybody where we're supposed to be going, so, um, you know, let's have them working. Okay. And what about the side of the vehicle, Graham? Um, see, the first thing I can see around here is a tyre. Yes, we, we spend a lot of time talking about tyres. A lot of incidents are caused by tyres that are either underinflated, overinflated, or they don't have enough tread on them. You know, so we need to make sure that a tyre like this fitted to this type of vehicle has at least one millimetre of tread in the centre three quarters band of the tyre. Okay. And I've heard that nearly half of all horse box accidents are because of a problem with a tyre so I guess that these rubber discs are really important and we really need to check them. They're, they are really important. These are the only things that are keeping your box and your horse and you off the ground. Okay. Unfortunately tyres get very badly neglected. We park the box up over winter, leave it in the field, we don't think about it. UV rays in normal sunlight actually perish the rubber and they degrade the rubber and you can't see it happening. Okay. And you actually end up weakening the tyre so it's important to keep a big check on tyres. And is there anything that I might be able to see visually on the tyre that might alert me that there's something wrong? Look for cuts, bulges, 
things sticking in the tread, nails, because the farrier doesn't tend to sweep up after themselves. So, you know, they're all hazards that we face with horse boxes. Look at the side wall itself. Is it smooth? Does it have a crazed pattern on it? You know, that's the sort of thing that we should be looking for. Um, other things, although this one's fitted with a uh, cover, what we should also be looking for is checking the tightness of the wheel nuts. Okay, not everything that perhaps we need to check every single time we take the vehicle out. Certainly things that we should be checking often. Okay. And what about the side of the horse box, Graham? Other, is there other anything things, I need to yeah, check here? Other things on the side of the box. Mm. Under chassis storage areas, absolutely fabulous for keeping kit in, but we need to make sure that they are properly secured So just in give place. them a, just a little bit of a... Yep, make sure, make sure that the locks nice are actually holding really them in place. Okay. Yeah. And another very important thing, this one's fitted with the fuel tank on the offside, but make sure that there's a cap fitted to the tank and that it's fuel tight. You don't want diesel leaking out as you're going around corners, sloshing out onto the road surface. Motorcyclists hate diesel on road surfaces. It doesn't cause for a good motorbike ride out. Good tip. And I've got another tyre here. Now, somebody told me that when I check my tyre pressure, I need to make sure that this tyre is, is cold. Is that true? That's true, yep. Tyre pressure should always be checked with the tyre cold. With this one, you've got a diffi added difficulty that the back axle has got twin tyres fitted to it. So what the manufacturers will do is put a link tube from the inner tyre onto the surface of the outer tyre so you can actually check both from the outside. You don't have to scrabble under the box to uh, check the pressure. That's However, <laughs> you might have to scrabble under there to check the tread depth. I was just going to ask you about that with the, with the yep. inner tyre. That's the groom's job. <laughs> okay, so I have another box here, so just check this up yep. nice and just tight. Just check it's nice yep. and tight, it's not going to open. And then we come here and we've got the, the ram. Now somebody told me that if you've got a wooden ram or a wooden floor, you need to be checking it. But how on earth would I go about checking this? They were right to tell you that, particularly with wooden floors, but really with any type of floor, you should be checking them. It's not possible for us to check them by jumping up and down because we're not the same weight as the horse. So what we have to do is get something like a screwdriver, either a flat bladed or a Phillips head screwdriver, and what you do is just push the screwdriver into the surface of the ramp and in numerous places, particularly where the horse stands in the back, to make sure that the floor is capable of supporting the weight. Obviously, if the screwdriver goes into the surface, you don't want to be putting your horse onto it. No. Get a professional to have a look at the surface and get it replaced. But my box goes in for its annual test every year. I mean, is that something that's not that's checked on the annual test? No, it's not part of the test. The test will look at the mechanics of the vehicle. It will look to make sure that the shock absorbers are working, the springs are working, that the brakes work, but the actual floor and the ramp are not part of the statutory MOT. So those are my responsibility exactly. to check. Exactly, yep. Ninety percent of the vehicles we've looked at here today have the breakaway cable attached in the wrong position. The idea of this cable is that should this fitting here fail or the attachment bolts fail, the trailer becomes detached from the back of the towing vehicle. This cable, because it's still attached to the vehicle, pulls the brake on on the trailer and stops the trailer running freely away. The problem with attaching the cable like this is that it's the tow hitch or its mounting bolts that quite frequently fail. So what we need to make sure is that this cable is still attached to the vehicle. So what we do with this particular vehicle is attach the cable to this bracket here, which is securely fastened to the vehicle and independent of the actual tow hitch itself, like that, so that should this part fail, then the cable is still firmly attached here, the trailer departs and the cable will pull the brake on, stopping the trailer from running away.